we're going to talk about AC circuits in particular series impedance of an RL circuit and some odd phenomena so get a cup of coffee hey hey what's happening guys since we're all stuck at home I figure we could take a deep dive into some electrical engineering formula and calculations and talk a bit about AC circuits, RL circuits, series impedance, odd phenomena, rectangular versus polar uh, equations. You know, just pass the time as we do. So, first of all, let's take a look at this. This is a simple series RL circuit. We have an AC voltage input, 12 volts AC at 60 hertz and it's feeding through a 50 ohm resistor and a 265 millihenry inductor and what is underneath my piece of paper uh, parts <laughs> so if we want to talk about this circuit then the first thing we need to do is calculate the reactance of the inductor so that we can be talking about resistance kinda for the whole thing and it's not hard to do. Our formula for uh, the reactance of the inductor, that's what that is, that's inductive reactance, is the imaginary number J omega T. That's, that's how I draw omega. I'm not good at Greek letters. I'm not Greek. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like crazy today times L. Now that equals, in this case, uh, 2 pi times 60 hertz times 265 times 10 to the th uh, minus 3. Don't want to mess up your uh, polarity there. Henry's. And that gives us the imaginary number J of 100 ohms. Okay? Just, I mean, if you want to know more, just search for uh, inductive reactants. I, I can't get into too much, so we're going to be here for, you know, hours. All right? Now, since our resistor and our inductor are in series, the math is really easy. We can just man, get out from under my paper. We can just figure out that uh, Z equals R times XL, right? We just figured out XL. We already know R. So Z is equal to 50 ohms plus 100 ohms. See, it's not that hard. That's the rectangular form. If we want to go to the polar form, we simply say that Z is equal to the square root of 50 squared plus 100 squared times, okay, we're going to go crazy now, right? The tangent minus 1 is 100 over 50, and that equals 112 ohms at a phase angle of 63.4 degrees. I just threw that in there. You don't have to really worry about it too much, okay? Now, don't let the imaginary part fool you, okay? There is actual resistance there. 112 ohms worth, but only a portion of this is real resistance. The rest is inductive reactance. So if you are like a fan of Big Clive, he always talks about real power versus apparent power. That's kind of where we're at here. Now, we can find the current in our circuit as well by using the AC Ohm's Law. And that simply says that I is equal to Vs 
over z total, okay, and that's 12 volts AC at zero degrees over 112 ohms at 63.4 degrees or 0 0.107 amps at negative 63.4 degrees. What that means is that the current is negative here, okay, lags behind the applied voltage or the total current across the network by 63.4 degrees. Since this is a series circuit, then I is equal to IR is equal to IL. IR, IL. See where we're at there? Now the voltage across the resistance and the inductor can be found using Ohm's law for an AC voltage divider. And I'm not going to go too far into this or we're going to be here forever. But it is um, the voltage over the resistor is equal to 5.35 volts and the voltage over the inductor is equal to 10.7 volts. The phase angle is going to change here. Now this was for only an instant time, okay? So T equals zero. So like if we if we look at our sine wave, okay? Let's draw a graph here. This is zero, and this is uh, this is voltage, and this is time. So our sine wave. When we're doing these calculations, we're simply picking one instant in time. It doesn't matter which instant in time it is, but we're picking an instant in time, and that's where it is. Now, since we're doing a sine wave, we get over time that gradual ramping up and then ramping down of the voltage. So this number, these numbers, are going to change over time. So we're, like I said, we're simply picking out an instant in time to do this. Now, if we wanted to create a more accurate picture of how the whole system behaves over time, we plug this more general omega t, that's our time, okay, we talked about up here. Our omega t, we're just uh, going to put that into the source voltage and convert it to RMS values by multiplying it by 1.4. One four, that's your magic RMS number. Okay, and then what we get now is a VS of seventeen volts at omega t, which is a snapshot. Which is I'm sorry, which isn't a snapshot. It is instead a continuous description of this sine wave. So now we can figure out the apparent power. Okay? You still with me? Get more coffee if you need it. So our apparent power, we'll just call it AP, we can figure out by saying our VA is equal to I R M S times V R M S, right? Our apparent power is equal to our RMS current times our RMS voltage. So now we can come down here and we can say 0 0.107 amps times 12 volts AC and we get our apparent power of 1.284 VA volt amps. But only the resistance itself consumes power. All right, so now we can say that our PR is equal to our current RMS squared times the resistance because only the, re the res resistive part is consuming the power. So we're back to 0.107 amp 
squared times 50 ohms, 50 R, that's what we had up there. All right, and we get our resistant power of 0.572 watts. The reactive power of the inductions, which is called VAR, is equal to our current RMS squared times XL, our react inductions, which we figured out up here, okay? And we do that formula, and we're going to come out with 1.145 VA. So the power factor, the real power, which is a combination of these two things that we have been talking about, our power factor, PF, is equal to PR over VA equal to the cosine of phi which is our uh, our angle, our negative 63.4 degrees negative 63.4 and what we get is 0.45 lagging. Phi is the phase angle between our VS and our IS. We haven't really discussed repair and active power yet. But I think we've gone far enough today. If you guys want more of this, we could certainly do it. It's all I'm doing is sitting around the house. I hope this helped you understand AC circuits a little bit better and the difference between real power, parent power, uh, current lagging, voltage lagging, all that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about it more in depth, okay? All right. That's all I got for today. So feel free to like, comment, share, you know, all that good stuff. Appreciate you guys watching. Big thanks to the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace. I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. A dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.